So, wake up ministry, ministry or ministries, but it's not about us, it's about, <laughs> always about Jesus Christ. And I only can tell you when uh, someone says something, this and this, has several opinions, when you invite me, you always invite Jesus Christ. And I will not uh, allow that someone separates us. And Jesus Christ, by the way, according to the Word of God, He is the Word. Amen. And I, really, this I will not uh, let anyone, and it will not be happen at any time. The Word belongs to me, and I belong to him. I gave my, uh, my life to him and we are one. And this is, I want to reach the goal, you know. And um, I don't want to seek my own ministry. I want to re be careful not to steal in the honor. It's, everything belongs to him. Yeah. And so it should be, I'm working on it. I'm not perfect as Paul said. Um, yeah, good, but too many words. You, I heard you're interested about, to hearing about Europe. <laughs> yeah. There it is. Germany, uh, you heard probably a lot about Sweden. Yeah, we already spoke about that Sweden uh, got the highest raping rate of whole Europe, but Germany is probably not far away from this. So what we already spoke about um, started to happen many, many months ago, and we almost hear every day something, but not out of the fake news. Yeah? As your president says, I agree 100% because we have it here too. They lie to us, they don't speak out the truth in full. So that's why we, uh, or the people who, who are not in internet, who cannot speak, uh, or cannot understand English, for them it's difficult to get the real news. And that's why they don't <coughs> understand who Trump is and why he became the president. And they only hear some cases of rapes, of criminality and so. Um, yeah, this is the situation. So Sweden, as the journalist of CBN said, they heard it's almost lost. We have France. France, most of the people probably live uh, in Paris or around Paris, has been burning for months already, parts of uh, Paris. There are groups of Muslims and of leftist, uh, leftists together fighting in the streets against everyone, everything, against the police, against the state. And um, they already have the state of emer emergency, you know this. And the media in Europe, mainly in West Europe, blocked the informations. Probably, I, this is the only thing I, how I can, I can understand it, because uh, France has elections, uh, pre-elections this month, and they probably don't want that Marine Le Pen will win but she must win. If she <coughs> will not win. France is very important for Europe. Yeah, and it's a partner from Germany. Um, UK, you heard probably many things from UK, London, the last terror attack, and uh, they invited too many Muslims from Pakistan already in the last years, so for many years, and um, I don't know why they did it, but um, can, they can be lost soon. But we are happy, and probably you too, because of the Brexit. Yeah. It's the first country uh, that leaves the EU. Yeah. So 
And we wish also to leave it because it's a... Uh, Matthias will speak about it later. So Austria and Switzerland, we have the little Switzerland. There are many, I can tell you. And Austria also has mountains. They are small countries with less Muslims yet, but they already got several uh, terror attacks. I don't know if you, you heard it, uh, several small this, this, but what is small, you know? When it hurts, uh, when, it, when it injures people or anything else like this, then it is what we call it, yeah, an attack. So Austria and Switzerland is not uh, bad as Germany, um, but they are small and they cannot be separated from what is happening in Europe. Yeah? And some still think um, they can then, when, because there are still people who don't like us. Yeah? And I heard that some neighbors, they said, oh, the Germans, they can take them. But <laughs> when they, because their aim is to take over Germany, when they get this strong nation, then all are in danger around too. So, and they will probably, we, we thought about very often, when the fire really would, will start, it already started in several areas, but I mean over the whole country, then they would all close the borders, I'm sure. And then, so, our neighbors are allowed, I don't know how it is here, but in main neighbors, they are allowed to be armed. We are not, as I mentioned. We are not allowed to have a longer knife. We don't want to use it, but they declare war on us, not we on them. So Belgium, uh, they say, would have already 40% uh, Muslims in the government. Um, they spoke about it already some years ago, so it's, yeah, no words about it. Germany, the cry of my heart and the land of my origin. Uh, I would love to tell you a funny thing, uh, what happened in New York, because we came first to New York. And um, a man, an African from French Guinea, brought us to the airport. So he drove this car, big car, and um, then he started speaking about your president. Everything bad, up and down and left, right, and everything, you know. And uh, we listened to him and were smiling inside, were waiting. And then uh, finally he said, but uh, he is not a politician, but he loves the country. Yeah. Yes. So this is what he got in his mind. This is something very important. And then he said something very funny. I can tell you, I was laughing. He said, uh, what do you think about, uh, could we not send this Donald J. Dr Trump to the country of uh, back to the country of his origin, Germany, to Angela Merkel. <laughs> and I jumped in the sky and said, yes, gave him to us. I will, I will be happy we take him. Please, please, send him to us. You know? And we were all laughing in the car. And then, <laughs> then I said, and I have a good idea. We will make an exchange. I will send you Angela Merkel. And she, because he made a complaint about the border to Mexico, no? that, that the president will close it and all the workers could not work in, in the US anymore and you will not have all the workers from Mexico, but I, I haven't heard this, you know. Um, I said, and she and those bad politicians, we will send all to them. You will be happy. They will open all of your borders. She will invite all the criminals to the US. You can have her, I said. 
<laughs> and we will be happy with Trump. So we will close our borders, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> so it was a funny thing. Um, Germany. Yeah, it makes me really sad uh, to see what is happening there. Uh, many people write me on Facebook and the Patriots and, you know, there are still more unbelievers who understand the signs of the time and not the Christians. Yeah, it's unbelievable for me. Why do they understand and the Christians don't? And they are so disappointed and they don't know what to do and then they worry about the future and some already left to Australia, some want to come to the US, that some want to go, who was from Canada, by the way? Maybe. Yeah, hi, Hartford, welcome. Um, they want to go to Canada but they don't realize yet what's going on there. So, this beautiful country, Canada, is so, so beautiful. Yeah, um, so they, they want to move or they think about to move. Some don't have the money to move, but um, we heard already that several uh, millionaires um, left Germany and others want to follow. So we spoke about in our first presentation that in 2015 1.5 to 2 million around in public they said um, would have come to Germany end of until end of 2015 about 2016 we don't have any numbers no uh, they it was quite quiet but um, we don't know how many came in 2016 and at the moment we have spring and we heard, only we heard from Italy and from Spain. In uh, Spain started uh, already, Spain, we have here Spain. And uh, the guys from Africa, this is Africa, jumped over the borders to Spain too. And Italy has big, big problems. Ten thousands per day or per week. And uh, here in Sicil Sicilia, Sic Sicily, you say? Um, Calabria here is so beautiful. And they come here but still by, uh, by boats. Um, Italy, and, and they still want to come mainly to Germany, probably to take over. And Turkey, Turkey, you have heard probably about this guy names himself Erdogan. Mm -hmm. no. uh, in Germany, people call him Hitler, <laughs> the second Hitler. He uh, accuses us and makes threats to us and he says we are the Nazis but he should probably look into the mirror yeah. <laughs> and um, he imprisoned many many people and or many t many died uh, the opposition uh, people from the, the medias and I don't know just people from the opposition so he is very, very aggressive and strict and too many, many young people follow him. He makes also, Matthias will add after me, um, <coughs> makes also some um, campaigns for his elections in Turkey, in Germany. Yeah, but Matthias will add something. I don't want to say, say too much. Um, still the liberals, you call them liberals, I call them socialists, humanists. Uh, together with the churches, they prepare the way for Islam. As they did it in other countries, they still do it in ours. They want to. So, and still those people are mostly young Muslim men. They don't look very hungry, 
they have muzzles, uh, they are still in military age and um, do you want to say something in this, on this point? Okay. Um, I wanted to add some uh, things Heidi uh, told already, especially about Turkey. Because Turkey, when we look what's happen, what is happening in the world, not only in Europe, Turkey is at the moment is very important. Um, because as my wife Heidi already mentioned, Erdogan, he is really, um, not only that in, we don't do it, but the media in Germany and some uh, politicians, they say he's, he's acting like Hitler did in the 30s and in the 40s. And when you see how he thinks, does, uh, does then you, you really see that he studied uh, what Hitler did, how he acted, and that he is very aware of what he is doing. And so, um, I don't know, I'm the second time uh, here with you and last year in my, May, Heidi told you that the European Union, it was just a decision made in February 2015, the European, uh, the, the European Union decided to pay 3 billion euro, this is 3.2 billion US dollar, to Turkey for keeping their uh, borders closed and keep the, um, the refugees from Syria to keep them in Turkey, that they wouldn't come into the EU. So they made this deal and Germany, because Germany is the heart of Europe and it's the most powerful economy, they alone had to pay 427 million euro, this is about 455 uh, million US dollars. So this was the amount Germany paid. But what they didn't consider when they made this deal, with whom they were making this deal. Because, you know, when you want to shake hands with the devil, uh, he will uh, rip you off completely, right? And this is what they did. And now, as a result, what we see now, the outcome, Europe and especially Germany, I have to look it at my notes because I had to get the vocabulary for it. <laughs> they are now uh, valuable, are you valuable, to political blackmail through Erdogan. Yeah. So he can, he can blackmail us because what he is doing now, when you don't do what I want to do you or what I tell you to do, then I will open all the borders and send the refugees from my country to yours. And this is what he does. And you know how many refugees are currently in Turkey in, in camps from this uh, war zones in Syria and other countries? Three million people. They are in Turkey. And we already had, we had 2015, we had this 1.5 to 2 million. 2060s, they hold, hold the numbers under the table. Would you say under the table? They, they don't tell you, but you hear that per day or per week, 10,000s are coming, still coming to Italy and to Spain, Heidi, mainly to Italy, Heidi mentioned it already. Uh, and so it would be really a big mess for the European countries if Erdogan would open his borders and send all these people to us. And I'm convinced uh, when he wants to do it, he, he, he will take action on it, right? So. Uh, Germany and Europe are in a really bad condition <coughs> and as Heidi already told you, <coughs> at the moment Erdogan, because he wants to get hold of all the power, he wants to switch the constitution in uh, Turkey, I don't know if you've heard about it, to a presidential system that gives him more power th than he already has. And you know he misuses his power he imprisons uh, journalists, he imprisons uh, politicians from the opposition. Even we, had, uh, we have a partner city as the city of Frankfurt, uh, the city is Eskishir in uh, Turkey, and we made a solidarity visit to this city because it's the only, uh, the only city in whole Turkey which is governed at the moment by a Christian uh, mayor. And there was also, I didn't attend this tour, but um, I spoke with the members of our parliament uh, who attended it and they said, they also spoke with the governor uh, or the mayor of Istanbul. 
And when you know he's uh, from the hierarchy, you say hierarchy, he's the third guy in, in, the, in Turkey, so the mayor of Istanbul is very important. And he has a cousin, he is from the AKP, the, the party um, Erdogan represents, but even him they arrested, they threw him in jail because he was not so online with what Erdogan is doing. So even if you are a member of the AKP, you are not safe. You have to k take care of what you say. And we have one journalist from Germany, also he has a double pass. He has two passports. He is, has a German passport and he has a Turkish passport. And this is the craziness about giving people two passports because uh, now Erdogan imprisoned him. He is uh, since seven weeks in, um, in prison in Turkey and they accuse him to uh, spy for Germany or for other countries and uh, uh, <laughs> perhaps for the US, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and today, after seven weeks, the German general consul is the first time allowed to visit him in prison. Can you imagine this? And prisons in Turkey, I can tell you, they are not so nice as those in the US or in Germany. Yeah, and he's in Istanbul in the biggest German of, uh, in the biggest prison or largest prison of all uh, Turkey with more than 10,000 10, in, in inhabitants, you say inhabitants, oh, or yeah. <laughs> imprisoned, imprisoned there. So <laughs> it's, n it's surely not nice. So this is what Erdogan is doing. And for this campaign, because this election about the referendum, uh, about the constitution will take place, and he is now doing a campaign, and he, because in Germany about 3 million Turks already live uh, in Germany, but as they have the Turkish nationality, they are allowed to vote and he, they also live in other European countries. So what does Erdogan and his government do? They are traveling through Europe and doing campaign in other European countries. So and now, because he accused, uh, as Heidi said, he accuses others uh, to be uh, fascists or Nazis when they don't do what he wants to do, uh, so he, uh, some uh, countries started to, uh, to prohibit uh, this and they said you are not allowed to speak or make a campaign in our country. Yeah. And as you heard, the Netherlands, they had um, elections some weeks ago and we hoped for Gerd Wilders that he would make it, but uh, unfortunately he failed. But you know what happened? There was one, the min you say, the Minister for Foreign Affairs? From Turkey, he wanted to campaign in um, in 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 the, Nether in the Netherlands, and um, then the uh, Rut Mark Rutte, the the Prime Minister of the Netherlands, he said, "No, you are not allowed to come in." And it was a big thing; it was a heavy fight. And I already said, "It looks like it's uh, they made a small business; uh, uh, they made a deal because the elections. It was one week before the elections, you know." And he wanted to show how strong he is, and that he says uh, shows uh, the Turkish government where are the borders. And I think this costed Gerd Wilders uh, some votes because they thought, oh, our uh, 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 our president is doing right well. <coughs> and he kept him out, and Erdogan was out of rage, and he was saying, Nazis, Netherlands are Nazis. They call <laughs> collaborated with Germany and everything and he was really going wild but you know what happened after the election this Mark Rutte he oh excuse me I was not so kind to you and sorry and uh, we want to have good relationships again so it was all made up for the elections oh. right yeah. and so is how they betray the people and it's really it's really sad so and also in Germany uh, some local politicians, they, re they said, we won't allow campaigns in our cities, and we had the same things. He said fascists, Nazis, and uh, he was really getting wild on us. But So we have to uh, take a close eye on Turkey, what is happening there. And I think there are some more things which will come up. Um, perhaps what con can I add? Uh, what is important about Europe? So there are some glimpses of hope. Mm, 
So you have the, you know uh, that Dale Hurt, he, we know him personally, we are in regular contact with him. We will uh, visit him after we finished our tour here in Washington State. And he, after he visited um, Sweden, he told us literally uh, Sweden is already lost. And you know, they made such a mess about your president after he said, have you heard what is going on in Sweden? He was referring to the Fox News. Even I'm not a native English speaker, but I heard his speech. And I'm, we are tracking him. Yeah? We are looking all the life uh, on Fox News and so on, the, what is going on. And even I, as a non-native speaker, I, I didn't have the... Uh, I didn't got the clue that he was speaking about a special event, what was going on in Sweden the night before. But then even the Swedish government, they said, what are you telling? What do you want? Uh, so uh, in Sweden it's also nice and perhaps the ones of you had been last year here, Heidi showed a small video about the riots, what are going on in Sweden and you know even the woman they are, don't, don't dare to go out uh, of, uh, on the streets in the evening or in the night. They, when they are blonde or fair hair, they make it uh, dark so that they wouldn't be so, uh, get, that the, the refugees are not so attracted on them. And this is all going in Sweden. Uh, so this is really a big deal and uh, your president was totally right. The other uh, hope we have, uh, Austria. Um, they um, uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago they made a ban uh, for wearing the niqab or the burqa in public so they made a law against it uh, to um, get this a little bit handled so this is another uh, glimpse of hope and as Heidi said in Switzerland every uh, uh, every family has a, a gun in their in their home because of the army they have this Reservists in Austria, they are also allow, allowed to be armed. Uh, this is a good thing. And um, we have about to speak about Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. Because Eastern Europe is completely different from Western Europe, what we were speaking about now in the last <coughs> minutes. Because you see countries like uh, Hungary, and what Heidi didn't mention, uh, that many people uh, many patriots in Germany, they are leaving Germany and they are going to Hungary because Viktor Orban, the president, already made an invitation. He said, when you have problems in your countries and come to Hungary, we will give you refuge. So this is the crazy thing that people at the moment already are leaving and as what Heidi was mentioning about the millionaires, in 2016 so many millionaires left Germany as never before since World War II. And you know this is, we speak about the elite, do you say elite? Mm -hmm. hmm? Yeah. yeah, so when the elite starts to leave, you know, they are well educated, they know what is going on, they went, went to have their money safe and they, they have the possibility to, to leave, yeah, because of their wealth. So not everyone who lives in, in a state has the possibility to leave from one day to another, but they do. And this is an indicator, and even the mainstream media brought it out uh, as it is. Yeah, It's an indicator what is going on. So we have Poland. Poland is really strong. Uh, uh, they are Catholic, but they are strong in their faith. and. They are also um, pa good patriots, really good patriots. And we have Slovakia. And they all closed their borders. They yeah. said we don't want to have, and this is interesting because they speak out the truth and the rest of the EU is bashing them for that. Mm. They are saying the Muslim culture is not compatible with our Christian European tradition with our culture and so we won't let these people in because there will come conflict. So they are realists, they see what is going on and they say, we Czech Republic also, and they say we will let refugees in but we will take Christian refugees. And these are them who they slaughter in this Middle East countries and they slaughtered already half a million of them. But in Germany, they don't care about, and the crazy thing in Germany, and the sad thing is that with there are true refugees who are coming from the war zones. They need our help. 
but along with them they come their slaughterers, their murders. They are coming, coming along with them and they are ending up together in an asylum home. And then there are the fights and we have uh, lots of them, so the trouble is going on. And when a Christian from Iraq, for example, or from Syria is coming to Germany and seeking refuge, they don't find refuge, they find their, their persecutors again in the asylum homes. And our government is uh, yeah, like blinded or they are ignorant about that. Okay, but there are glimpses of hope and we have upcoming elections. And so we prayed together with all the prayer warriors in Germany. We prayed for your elections last <laughs> November. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we were so at the, at the screen and looking and were so excited. And all the, when they counted the votes, we were, we stood, uh, were awake all the night until they called out the states and it was clear. And uh, your new president came up to the stage and then we went to bed, <laughs> very tired. And, but please pray for France. Because these are elections coming up, 15th April is the pre-election and then in May is the final election and please pray for France that Marie Le Pen can do it and as you heard already perhaps in um, September <coughs> we will have elections in Germany and I can really tell you this other candidate uh, from the Social uh, Democrats is Martin Schulz, the former president of the European Parliament. They brought up he is just more evil or bad than Angela Merkel. Uh, so it's uh, terrible and AFD, the, the alternative for Germany, uh, the pa new patriotic uh, movement and party, conservative, they are still too weak and uh, they are fighting them with everything they can and um, they have from a human point of perspective they have uh, no chance chance at all so we will have to say what will happen but we believe that God is in control amen amen, amen. 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 okay we can do it yeah thank you because Russia it's not uh, it's not Europe but it's uh, it's uh, close to Europe and uh, yeah be beside yeah it be doesn't belong to the European Union Part of it belongs to the continent of Europe for sure, but you have heard what happened uh, yesterday yes. or before yesterday, the day before, I'm a little bit out of time because the time zones, uh, what happened in St. Petersburg and now it turned also out that it's an, an ISIS connected attack, it was a self-suicide bomber who blasted this uh, uh, subway train, 11 killed and many, many injured. So also in Russia they have these this problems and uh, it's uh, not only about Islam there but it's also be because of the former Soviet Union uh, Republic, Kazakhstan and Chechenian. So they want to be independent and they are fighting against Russian but this uh, they found out was uh, inspired by ISIS and uh, because President Putin was at exactly at this time in St. Petersburg and they wanted to show him how weak he is or to see the people that you, look your president is St. Petersburg and he is not even uh, able to protect you this is what they are you know what their mindset is this is how they how they are thinking and with what you have to uh, calculate okay Europe yeah so as Heidi already said um, all these sexual assaults we are having, the murders, uh, the crime, um, the criminal statistic, it went through the roof. We have local criminal statistics who were, which were published uh, some days ago, about 2016, and they show an increase of criminality about 40 to 50 percent. And mostly it's because of the ref refugees which came in. And you will not found out in the mainstream media, when you read the national newspapers, they have like, um, they, they, don't, they wouldn't tell the, the, the nationality or the background of the offender. Yeah? <clears throat> they will only say a young man, and, um, but when you read a young man and there he had a knife, you, you already know. You already know. <laughs> it probably wouldn't, was not a German, right? Uh, so, 
But when you, but, but yeah, and sometimes they have the, ne the, the, the German, when they are in the second or third generation, then they have the German passport mm -hmm. and they say it was a German, right. but he had Turkish roots. Yeah, so, and this is very difficult and um, sometimes in the local newspapers, um, so you have here the Squim Gazette, I think, or, yeah, when you have this local newspaper, then they report about the background, they say, who the offender was, what, and uh, so we have the, what also Heidi and I are doing on our Facebook page and many others are doing. We are uh, screening the internet after such reports and then we are posting it and this what people did and you, they get out this map of so-called uh, isolated incidences, this is what they say, every time something happens it's an isolated or single uh, incidents, but we have uh, daily, we have many of them and it's so sad to read and I want to show, uh, show you uh, quickly two of them because they are not only example but they, uh, they explain something, what is the mindset, what is the mindset of the people and, and what is going on, what is the really problem. So we had uh, last year 2016 we had one um, young German woman, Maria is her name, uh, 19 years of age, beautiful uh, young lady and um, in, in the city of Freiburg and she was murdered by a so-called refugees and uh, they said he was underage. So she was raped, she was killed, he threw her away like rubbish in a river and there she drowned. Uh, and she didn't find him immediately, but they found DNA, so it took a, a while, it took a few days until they got him. So this is a little bit important because I will come back to it later, what, what else uh, happened. So, and then uh, after they found him, they said it was an asylum seeker, Hussein K. Dot, and they said he was 17 years old from Afghanistan, and he came to Germany in the year 2015. So, what they found out after they got him, in fact he, was, he had already raped and almost killed another young woman in Greece in the year 2013 and in, um, he had a court case after he, he was uh, catched by the police in a court case there in February 2013 uh, 14, he was sentenced with 10 years in youth prison. But no one knows how they let him out of the prison um, uh, one and a half years later. Uh, we don't know if they wanted to get rid of him and brought him to another country or if they released him, um, him earlier. And then he came, after this, he came to Germany and he said, I'm 17 years old, I'm from Afghanistan, I'm a pure refugee, please take me. And they took him uh, and said, heartily, heartfelt welcome. So this is the issue, no wedding. Um, and when they say they are underage, and most of them they are not, when you see photos of the offenders, you see that they are not 17 or, or 16, they are much more older, but they say we are under 17 because then they will get much benefits, they will get special care, uh, so when they are not, um, how do you say, accompanied by, by, by parents. Yeah? Um, and uh, the German government pays per month 6,500 uh, euro, this is a little bit less than 7,000 US dollar for one such uh, uh, underaged, unaccompanied refugee. This is what they pay because he need, uh, uh, they are traumatized, they need, uh, uh, how do you say, a psychologist and everything. This, so this is what is going on. So, and it, they found out he was almost 25. They made, uh, how do you say, they put a piece from his hand, uh, from the bone, from the bone and you can make tests and the, you can find out the real age and after he killed this uh, young uh, girl so she, they found out he was already 25 and he almost killed another lady in Greece. So and now comes the 
the most weird stuff. Um, what what happened? Uh, this is uh, how do you say the ob ob obituary or how do you obituary. Say? Obituary. obituary notice? The parents of Maria did in a newspaper, and this is before I told you they didn't found the uh, the offender immediately. It took some time, and they found him because of a DNA they found. What uh, I don't have it in. Is this the pointer? The red one. Ah. So I cannot. I have to translate, and I think you trust me that I translate it properly. So instead of flowers, we ask for a donation for the church, no, no, educational work of the church in Bangladesh, or the student initiative white click. This means uh, you can f uh, have a wide view. You can uh, look very far, look very far um, in Freiburg. And this is uh, this student initiative is. Uh, Initiative for uh, refugees uh, to help them. How do you, I, I wrote it somewhere? Uh, refugee aid. It's a refugee aid organization. The parents of this lady killed by a refugee. They didn't know it at that time, but even after they knew it, yeah, they they. They said not everyone is bad and uh, la 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 la, but so and this Maria, th and this was the reason how she met her uh, killer. She was working in a refugee aid initiative, and she knew this guy from the refugee home where she worked as a volunteer. So can you imagine this? craziness, this mindset, what these people have, and we have in the meantime so many women who, are, who had been raped or, or killed because they w uh, did uh, uh, volunteer work in these refugee homes. And the most, the most stupid thing was in Berlin. She was a member, of, or she is a member of the Green Party, and she was raped by refugees in an asylum home when she was there. And you know what she did? She went to the police and said, oh, I was raped, it was a gang rape, and also Germans were involved. This was a completely lie. And after 24 hours, she had a bad conscience, and they went to the police again, and she said, no, I didn't tell you the truth. There were no Germans. It was only, uh, it was only refugees who did it. And then she gave interviews in the newspaper. They asked him, why did you do this? Why did you tell the people there were also Germans involved? Yeah, I didn't to want to foster the prejudice. Prejudice? Prejudice. The prejudices against refugees. Uh, the, le the, the right wings would be getting stronger by this when they found out the truth. And so crazy are the people. Can you imagine this? Can you imagine this? It's unbelievable. So this is what we are fighting, it's brainwash. And the last thing, because it just happened yesterday, mm. <coughs> and this is another point I spoke about in, this, in the last meetings, and this you have to understand, because I think you are armed, but perhaps it's also a little bit true in your society. You know, this guy, black African, uh, Machiti, you know this, Machiti? You, you can read it? So there was, uh, so we had, we had uh, uh, spring uh, weather now at the last weekend. It was about, uh, perhaps about 80 degree Fahrenheit. It was pretty warm, and so a young couple, she was 23, he was 26. They put their small little tent, and went out for camping in a park. So this guy came with a machete. He smashed the whole tent. We don't know what he did to the guy. Uh, he couldn't defend his girl, and he raped her, and he had to watch it. And after that, he flew, and uh, this is a phantom picture, you know. They didn't caught him yet. They lost, they lost him. The guy was only, uh, he, did, he was so scared, only after this guy, this, the raper left, he called with the mobile, he called the police. So... Um, 
I made a comment on this and I said we were socialized in Germany in a peaceful society, in a non-violent society, you know, in the last 70 years. And the Germans, they are not used how to handle guys who show up with the machete and want to massacre you. They don't know it. They are not trained. And I know, Gary, you do the self, uh, 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 self-defending. Uh, you, 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 you are doing the self-defending training. And we also had a very great time with you one evening. And we appreciated this very much. But I don't, you have to, they are, the people don't know how to handle it. And the, all the refugees who are coming to us, it's the completely opposite. They are coming from violent mm-hmm. societies. Right. They are coming from war zones and they are trained. They know how to fight. They know how to kill. And they are willing to do it. Mm-hmm. Also in a country where they have so-called refuge and this is what he did and I made a comment on my Facebook page and I said this this 26 year old guy in the tent he would have better had a baseball how do you say batch or the uh, the bat baseball bat he would better have been had a baseball bat in his tent uh, beside his sleeping bag to defend himself and this is what the people are not aware of they are, not, uh, they are not aware that they might be a danger because the media lies at them, the media doesn't tell them. Yeah. Yeah? And so they are thinking, oh, it's all secure and it's only single incidents and nothing, nothing will harm me and nothing will happen to me, but then it happens and they are not prepared at all. So this is uh, the other issue we face with this refugee uh, thing, that we have this clash of civilizations. Violent societies on the one hand, non-violent, peaceful societies on the other hand. And this is what um, you have to know when you want to see what is behind all the issue. Hmm? Okay? <laughs>